This video will show the four-step process for creating simple web pages with a simple word processor. The four-step process starts with step one where we create a document and save it for the first time. Then step two where we will view the document in the browser for the first time. Then step three where we'll make changes to the document and view the changes in the browser. And then step four where we will close up everything go away, come back, and then set it, everything up to continue editing. Except that we're doing this video for the Mac, and the Mac has a little adjustment, sort of step one, maybe before step one, so I call it step zero, where we'll need to adjust the settings in text edit. So before we start, we have to find text edit and text edit, where it is, depends on the setup of your particular Mac, but it's in the Applications folder. Just how you find that depends on your setup. I can find it through my little Applications folder on my dock, and if I scroll down, I've got a lot of applications there, I'll find text edit. Otherwise, look on your hard drive in the Applications folder. And so when we start up text edit, it's not set up with the right settings. So we're going to want to start by going to the text edit menu and going to preferences. And at this point, under new document, we want to check a couple of things off here. First of all, we want to use plain text. And this is when creating a new document. It will create it as a plain text document. We do not want a rich text document. We also want to wrap to page. That's just a convenience. Uh, it's kind of annoying when you type long lines and they scroll off to the right. And that should be, uh, then we also want to uh, uncheck the box for show ruler. That's the last thing that we'll want to do on this tab, but we're going to want to go to the Open and Save tab, and there when we open a document or save a document, we want to ignore rich text commands in HTML files, and ignore rich text commands in RTF files, and then finally, we don't want to add a .txt extension to our plain text files. So that should get our settings just right, and we can then close up the preferences but then the other piece that we need to do is we actually want to close up text edit. We could actually close the document, but I'm going to quit out of text edit entirely. And then we are ready to start up text edit again. And then those settings will apply to the new document that we create. So I'm going to go to the Applications folder and scroll down till I see text edit and click on text edit. And now I've got a document and it looks a little bit different than the document that I had before. Now we have our plain text document and we're ready to type some HTML. Uh, to save time, I'm not going to show you how to type all that HTML. I'll just uh, paste that in there, some pre-typed HTML. And uh, you can look at other documents to see the exact tags and how those tags work. Uh, but we're just exploring the four-step process. So now that we've typed some HTML, a simple starter document that I've created here, I want to complete step one, which is to save this document for the first time. So I'm going to go to my File menu and choose Save. Now there are a few things here. First of all, I want to save this into a folder. So I've got to create that folder. So I am going to click on the little down arrow so that I can see everything here. And now I get the option for a new folder. And right now it's going onto the desktop. You can put the folder wherever you like. But the key is that all your files for the website or the web page have to go into this same folder. So I'm going to click on new folder. And I'll call this four step process and create. And now it says four step process up there. That means that my file is going into that folder. So I want to pay attention to where it's going, which is my folder. I want to pay attention to what it's called and what type of file it is. We've already taken care of the file type by setting up the, the uh, preferences earlier. 
So what we want to do now is just pay attention to the title of the file. And the, the name of the file, what it's called, is a simple name ending in .html. So it could be just a single word ending in .html. And by simple, I mean no spaces, no dashes, no slashes, no asterisks, no percent signs, nothing special in there, just letters and numbers ending in .html. Some of those special characters will work in your file names, but it's easier to just simplify it and not try to remember which ones will and will not work. And if you were creating a website, you might call your main document index.html. I'm going to pick something else. I'll call this fourstep.html. And you'll notice that with four step, I've capitalized the four, the F, and the S in four step and not put any spaces in there. That simplifies the name and, uh, and makes it work with the naming conventions. So now I've paid attention to where it's going, which is my folder, and what it's called, which is fourstep.html, the simple name ending in .html, and I'm ready to save. Now TextEdit does some kind of weird things. One of the weird things that it does is when I set the preferences to no ruler, it does something but not quite yet and this seems to be a little bit of a bug in text edit but we can take care of that so what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to actually close my file here I'm gonna click on the close button normally I don't close the file while I'm in the middle of this but we need to to reset the text edit settings so I'm going to close my file then I'm going to go to my file menu and open recent and there it is for step.html and what happens is it changes the window slightly and I can make this a little bit bigger uh, I can also make the text in here bigger just so you can see it more easily but it changed the window slightly that the no ruler is supposed to make it so that I take up the entire window but it didn't do that until I closed the file and reopened it so you don't need to bother with that but I get annoyed by that so this looks a little bit better a little bit easier to follow and I can see that I've already forgotten uh, a tag here so I'll just stick that in there I need the slash p right there at the end of my paragraph and then I can save my document again and so I'm ready to be done with the first step and move on to the second step so step two of this process is to view the document in the browser for the first time there are a number of ways to do that you could open your browser and choose file and open or what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my file in my folder and here's my folder I conveniently stuck it on the desktop so I'll open that up and I see the file there It says fourstep.html now if I double click on this chances are it's going to open in my browser but uh, you can do that if that works for you but what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it and in the menu that pops up I'm going to choose open with and then I'm going to choose a browser. In fact, I have more than one browser I could choose from, but I'm going to choose Firefox as my browser. And when you do that, you see the document as it's supposed to be. And you'll notice a couple of things here. One thing that we'll notice is that the title that I had is up here in the title bar, and you'll also notice that the stuff that I typed, the H1 for the big heading, is there big and bold across the top, and the paragraph is down below that. So that is perfect, just what I wanted. So now we have completed step zero, where we were setting up the settings in text edit. We've completed step one, where we created the document and saved it for the first time, paying attention to where it's going, what it's called, and what type of file it is. And then we are, have completed step two, where we viewed the document in the browser for the first time. And we're ready to move on to step three to make changes to the document and view the changes in the browser. So what I want to do now is I want to go back to my text edit view of the document. Keep in mind that we have one document that we're looking at in two different ways. We're looking at it 
in the browser right now, but that same document, when we go back to text edit, we can see the HTML codes. This is the same document. It's not two different documents. It's just two different views of the same document. So now we're ready to add some extra stuff here for step three. We want to make some changes to this document. So right now my paragraph says this document will be a sample HTML document to show how to use simple word processors to create web pages. The document won't say much but the video explains everything. Okay, so now I've added some text here. I've made a change to my document, and now I want to save it. So I go to the File menu and choose Save, and then I don't want to close it again. I want to go back to my browser, which is also still open, so I can find my browser, and there I can see my document but I do not see the changes. And that is because I need to refresh my document because when the browser grabs a page, it grabs that page and basically loads it onto your computer and then it doesn't know when that page has changed. If that page is out there on a server somewhere in Nevada or France or whatever, it doesn't know that there's been a change to that. This page happens to be on our computer, not on a server, but it's still the browser doesn't know it's been changed until we refresh the file. So I'll click on the refresh button or reload current page in Firefox. Different browsers have slightly different terminology. And I'll click on that and then the rest of my text shows up, and so the changes I made have shown up. So I can keep doing this over and over again. I can go back to text edit, make some more changes. Maybe I'll uh, close out that paragraph, add in a new paragraph. This is the second paragraph for my document. Make another change there and save that. Jump back to the browser, hit the refresh or reload button, and there is the change that I made. So I can keep doing that over and over again, and that completes step three. So now, we have adjusted our settings in TextEdit. Then step one was create a document and save it for the first time. Step two, we viewed the document in the browser for the first time. And then step three, we made changes to the document and viewed those changes in the browser and we were able to go back and forth between the browser and TextEdit to make changes, view the changes, make more changes, view the changes. Now it's time to close everything up, go away, come back, and set everything back up to continue editing. And that will be step four. So I'm done for the day. I want to quit out of everything. While I'm still working, I don't want to quit out of all this stuff. But now that I'm done for the day, I'm going to quit my browser, go to Firefox, quit Firefox, and then go to Text Edit and quit out of Text Edit, and maybe close up my folder, and maybe even shut down my computer. I'm not going to do that, but I could do that. And then I'm going to go away and then come back. And now I want to open it back up because I'm not done with it. I just stopped for the day or for lunch or whatever and I'm ready to start back up again. So I'm going to go uh, set this back up so that I can view the document in the browser and in text edit. So first of all I'm going to look for my document. I'm going to find my document. It's in my folder. And there it is. There's my document, so I'm in good shape. So now what I want to do is first of all get it started up in text edit. So I'm going to right click on the document, go to open with, last time I chose Firefox, but this time I want to choose text edit. And there's my document. It didn't remember that I had made it made the text larger for you to see. That doesn't affect the uh, way the browser sees it anyway. So I've got my document here, but I'll just for making it easier for you to see, I'll make it a little bit bigger and I'll make the window a little bit bigger. So now it's open in 
text edit. And next, what I want to do is I want to open this document in the browser. So I'll go back to that folder and where I see the document. I'm going to right click again, choose Open With, and this time I'll choose Firefox. And so now I see my document just as I left it, and I can jump back and forth between Text Edit and the browser. But I might have a problem. I might want to be sure that I've actually opened the same document. We've kept it very simple. We've got one document. Sometimes I'm working on multiple documents. Maybe I've saved something in one place and then saved it again in another place. And I'm not 100% sure that I'm actually looking at the same document. So I want to double check that. So right now I'm looking at what I think is the same document in the browser and in text edit. So before I go on to make some complicated edits and maybe use some tags I'm not familiar with and aren't sure how they work, I want to do something simple that I know will work. So here I say this is the second paragraph from my document. I'm just going to put some exclamation points there because I know that just adding some regular text in the middle of a paragraph shouldn't be a problem. So if those exclamation points show up in the browser, I know I'm looking at the same document. So I'll save this. I'll jump back to my browser and I will refresh the page and there are my exclamation points and I know I'm looking at the same document. If I'm not, then I want to close everything up and open it up again and test it again to make sure I've got the same document. And that's all that there is to step number four is just opening up the document by finding it, right clicking on it, choosing open with and text edit, then finding it, right clicking on it, open with and your browser and then testing to make sure you've got the same document. And now we're ready to go back and make as many changes as we like, save them, go back to the browser, refresh, and see our document. And that is the completion of the four-step process. So step zero was to adjust the settings and text edit. Step one was to create a document and save it for the first time, paying attention to where it's going, what it's called, and what type of file it is. Step two was to view the document in the browser for the first time. Step three was to make changes to the document and view the changes in the browser. And step four was to close everything up and then set it back up so that you could come back and edit some more, including the testing part where we tested to make sure we had opened up the file in the, in the browser and in text edit and that it was the same file. And that completes the four-step process.